Hey everybody, I'm Sam Gross from electricbikereport.com and this is the Ride Radiant Carbon. It is an ultra luxe, ultra premium with very cool componentry electric bike built by someone who has made a name for themselves designing some very interesting mountain bikes actually for about the past three decades. But now he is diving headfirst into the electric bike game and this bike, we're going to put it through its paces today. We're gonna to take a look at its components and we're gonna see how it does. So stick with us. So it's not very often I'm going to be bringing up the name of a specific bicycle designer in one of our reviews on Electric Bike Report, but the guy that designed this bike, Tony Ellsworth, is no average bike designer. For the past 30 years or so, he's made a name for himself, one, through the bike company that's bore his name, Ellsworth Bikes, and two, because he's just kind of become synonymous with creative and interesting and cutting edge bicycle designs. But now, Ellsworth has moved on from mountain bikes and he started a new bike company called The Ride. The Radiant Carbon is the first bike that the ride has ever released. It's one of just 350 that ever will be released. So on top of being very nice and very premium, it's also very rare. The Radiant Carbon is powered by a Shimano Steps E6100 motor that produces 60 Newton meters of torque. It's got a 630 watt hour battery hidden inside the down tube of the frame. And it also has some very, very cool componentry that we just don't see very often right now. Namely, that's the Enviolo Automatique Automatic Shifting Rear Hub. So it's a CVT, Continuously Variable Transmission Rear Hub. That means it's got a humongous range of gears and it handles all of the shifting for you. All you do as the rider is you choose which cadence you'd like to ride at. I usually pick about 75 to 78 RPM and the bike will automatically adjust which gear ratio you are in to help you maintain that cadence. As I mentioned before, the motor produces 60 Newton meters of torque. It's a class one motor that's limited up to 20 miles per hour. It's a great hill climbing bike. It's a great accelerating bike. It's an overall just great feeling bike. Handling the stopping power on this bike is a pair of Magura MT30 hydraulic disc brakes with 180 millimeters rotors front and rear. These brake calipers are four piston calipers. They're incredibly strong. It's the type of brake you typically see on like a downhill mountain bike or an enduro style mountain bike or even some of the really high powered and heavy speed pedal X that are designed to go up to 28 miles an hour. So these brakes are almost overkill for this bike. It's additionally got a Gates carbon belt drive that's connecting that Shimano Steps motor to the Enviolo rear hub in the back. So that is gonna be different than a bike chain. It's not gonna be greasy. It's gonna protect your pant leg. It's also gonna last an incredibly long time and be very, very quiet and smooth. There's little about this bike that isn't on the premium end of the spectrum, including the price. It costs north of $5,000. So obviously for something this rare, this nice, you're gonna be paying a handsome sum of money for it. But aside from the componentry, Ellsworth has poured some of his very unique engineering and frame style into this bike. It, it is of one, probably one of the most unique bicycles I've ever ridden in my entire life. It's got a very special geometry called a expanding universe geometry, I think is what it is. We'll get more into that later and how it rides but just the looks of the frame itself are so unique. It's got this big kind of honking wide tubing, but it's also got a many parts of the frame that are actually missing. You're missing one side of the fork leg. So there's only one fork leg that's on the left-hand side. The right-hand side is missing. You're also missing the right-hand side seat stay and the left-hand side chain stay. It's just very, very unique, very cool. And honestly, it's a design that has really, really grown on me. So this Shimano E6100 motor that comes on the Radiant Carbon is extremely responsive and extremely peppy. It's so responsive that actually it can pick up on steeper hills that I have one leg that's stronger than the other and it'll actually kind of surge along with my stronger leg. It's, it's really, really sensitive. So it's a great mid-drive motor from Shimano. 
In addition to that, it's a class one motor, so it's got no throttle and it's limited to 20 miles per hour max. And it's got three pedal assist settings. It's got the high mode, the norm mode, and then the eco mode. So that's high, medium, and low. To get an idea of how those three pedal assist settings perform, we put this bike through what we call the circuit test. It's the closest thing we've got to a closed course. It's about a one mile, one mile lap. And we do on this bike four laps. We did one lap for each pedal assist setting plus one without the motor on to get a baseline for how it pedals with no help. And this bike performed really, really nicely. We saw it do a hot lap around our circuit at 18.5 miles per hour average, so just a hair below its 20 mile an hour motor assisted maximum speed. And we saw an incredibly even and consistent jump between each pedal assist level. It was also just remarkably comfortable to ride on that eco mode, its lowest assist level. On some of the more affordable hub driven bikes that we test, that, that PAS1 level is almost unusable. It gives you so little energy. This one helps you quite a bit. It is very, very comfortable. So again, a great result from the E6100 motor and from the Radiant Carbon in general. So the ride specs the Radiant Carbon with a set of MT30 hydraulic disc brakes, and these are quad piston brakes. They are incredibly powerful. I have zero, zero question on how quickly they're gonna come to a stop. So we do think this bike is gonna perform very well in our brake test. The larger question is, since the brakes are going to be so powerful, how well are the tires going to grip to the ground when they inevitably begin to skid? I think that is going to be the deciding factor. I also think because these are fairly high-end hydraulic disc brakes, I'm going to be able to modulate the amount of power I'm putting into the disc brakes and be able to control the skid. So we're going to see how well that also contributes to slowing the bike down. But all in, my prediction, is the Radiant Carbon is gonna perform very well in a brake test, but let's see how it does. As we had predicted, the Magura MT30 hydraulic disc brakes did a spectacular job in our brake test. On average, we came to a stop in an average braking distance of 13 feet and 7 inches. That is well above the average stopping distance we currently have of all of the bikes we've put through this test before. That's sitting around 16 and a half feet, so 13 feet 7 inches is a great job. Additionally, how we'd expected, these Schwalbe Supermoto X tires did a very nice job of handling the skidding. The very first of the five brake tests I did, the tires immediately locked up, started skidding, and they seemed to handle fine. The bike tracked straight. I never got a sensation that was gonna come out from underneath me. In addition to that, the Magura disc brakes also have a lot of modulation. After that first stop attempt where I did skid fairly far, the second time I tried to actually apply less brake and the bike came to a stop even quicker. So these brakes are so powerful, you can almost overpower the bike. So all in a very nice job from the Ride Radiant Carbon in our brake test. So to get an idea of how far the 630 watt hour battery that's hidden inside of the frame of the Radiant Carbon will take us on a single charge, we did two separate range tests. The first in its lowest pedal assist setting, which is called Eco Mode, and the second in its highest pedal assist setting, which is just called High Mode. Now in Eco Mode, this bike went 77.05 miles before we actually just chose to stop the range test. And then in the high pedal assist setting, it went for 43.89 miles before the bike finally died. Now in our eco mode range test, we chose to stop the, range, the, the test with about one bar of five bars of battery remaining. The reason being is quite simple. We actually just ran out of time ahead of the holidays and our test rider needed to go and be with their family. So we estimate with that single bar of battery left, the bike would have gotten about 10 miles remaining out of, the, remaining out of its battery. So that would put it in the ballpark of 80 to 90 mile range. That is an astonishingly far distance. And in our max, our high pedal assist setting range test, it actually put up the furthest range test we've ever recorded of all of the bikes we've tested at 
43.89 miles. That is astonishingly far, and it really speaks testament to the efficiency of this motor, the battery, and really the entire bike in general. So to kind of wrap up our section here on the battery, I'm gonna leave you with one pro and one con, and let's start with the con. So my one gripe with the battery on this bike is actually how it reads out the distance that you have left. It uses this very, very cool and actually very useful algorithm that actually tells you in miles on each of the pedal assist settings how many miles you have remaining. The one issue with that is, is we found that the Radiant Carbon, or more specifically the Shimano Steps system, is very generous with how many miles it tells you it has left. For example, when you start on the max assist setting with a full charge, it's going to tell you you have north of 60 miles of range, which is astonishingly far, but we did not get that far. And then the eco mode setting, it's going to tell you you have almost 140 miles worth of range, which I don't think we would have gotten that, to be totally honest. So that is my one gripe. I do think it's very rare anyone's gonna be ever running the battery down to zero on this bike. It took us quite a long time to do it, but that is just a very minor complaint. Otherwise, that battery readout is extremely useful and it's gonna help you gauge how far you can go. The one pro though is our test rider, Josh, who does all of our low pedal assist range tests. He knows better than anyone what bikes feel like on their low pedal assist setting. He has logged hundreds of miles, lots and lots and lots of hours riding bikes with very little pedal assistance, and he could not stop raving at how well this one rode in the eco mode. It is very rare that we find bikes that with very little effort, or excuse me, help from the motor, ride as well as this bike does. So huge kudos to the ride for building such a efficient and great riding bike. So the Radiant Carbon is a remarkably stable handling bike. Actually, if you've never learned how to ride a bicycle without hands, I would highly suggest trying it on this bike because it just wants to stay upright. It's incredibly stable. The turning radius is a little bit wide, not too bad, but it's a very, very comfortable and nice riding e-bike. Part of this is due to Ellsworth's proprietary geometry design, which he calls expanding universe geometry. I'm not gonna get into all the nitty gritty of what that means, but basically the gist of it is that it is designed to be an efficient pedaling bicycle that's got an upright riding position that with the seat fully extended, you can still touch your feet to the ground when stopped, and it's supposed to handle very nicely. In my opinion, I think Ellsworth has nailed it right on the head with this. It is remarkably comfortable. It feels very, very efficient when you're actually pedaling it. And in addition to that, I can, even as for someone who's 6'1", who's never been able to touch their feet to the ground on any bicycle that's properly fitting me, I can touch the ground on this bike. So it's very, very cool. One of the side effects of this geometry, because it does adjust your body so far back behind the bottom bracket, is that it actually gives you quite a workout in your posterior chain. It's not a bad thing. I find it very nice, actually, but you get like a nice burn in your butt. You'd probably get a really good butt in the back of your legs by riding this bike a ton of miles. So the cockpit of the Radian Carbon is incredibly clean. This is partially due to the fact that there's just no shifter. Because of that Enviolo Automatique, automatic rear shifting hub. All you have is a display for the Shimano step system in the middle of the handlebars that's very nicely designed. And on the right hand of the bars, you've got a thumb switch with three different switches. And what that does is it allows you to adjust the cadence or how quickly you'd like to be pedaling the bike. And then the Enviolo hub does the rest of it. Now that CVT hub is incredibly cool. From my perspective, someone who's actually ridden bikes with derailleurs and shifters and a number of gears for upwards of two decades now, it took me quite a long time to get used to it, mostly just because I'm used to shifting. But if you're someone who is looking for simplicity in your bike, it is remarkably well working. This is the first Enviolo Automatique system I've ever ridden, and boy does it work well. They've done a great job designing it. And with this style of the bike, this kind of do-it-all, jack-of-all-trades frame design, it feels really, really nice. See, all you have to do is just pedal, pick your cadence, and it does everything else for you. So to get an idea of how well the Radiant Carbon goes uphill, we're gonna put it to the test on our test hill, Hell Holes. This is a third of a mile long hill. It's a 12% gradient on average. That is plenty steep and plenty long to put the Shimano Steps E6100 mid-drive motor to the test. 
This motor makes 60 newton meters of torque. It's plenty powerful. It should clear this hill with no problem, but we're gonna put it in the high mode and we're gonna see how well it goes. All right. So the high assist setting hill test for the radiant carbon. Just make sure my GoPro doesn't move. It's going okay. And keep in mind, this is not the most high powered e-bike, but this mid-drive motor does do a really nice job. 60 Newton meters of torque, pretty good amount. And it's just trucking along. It's definitely asking something of me in addition to the motor power. I'm feeling my heart rate go up. Breathing a little deeper, but nothing bad. It is pretty spectacular how well the Enviolo Automatique system adjusts to keep me at a really nice and stable and consistent cadence. As I'd mentioned before, the geometry of this bike it puts your butt so far back really engages your glutes and your hamstrings not in a bad way it's just you feel like a nice little burn going do a, a butt lift on the ride I'm just cruising along it's certainly not going to be our fastest time up the test hill but definitely decent. Not even a hint of struggle, at least not from the bike. Me on the other hand. That's it. So as we suspected, the Radiant Carbon did just fine up Hell Hole. It cleared the top in 2 minutes 11 seconds with an average speed of 8.3 miles an hour. That is not the quickest time we've ever recorded up this hill, but it did clear the hill, which is a feat in itself. So one question I do have about this mid-drive motor is it produces 16 meters of torque. That should be plenty to put up a good time up this hill. But one of the things that this bike lacks that a lot of other mid-drive bikes don't is a manually shifting drivetrain. This bike uses the Enviolo Automatique automatic shifting rear hub. And what that does is it actually takes all of the shifting control out of the rider's hands. This is one thing I might be diving too far into the weeds on. It's just a question I've got because this is a new piece of tech that we've really never tested before. One of the big advantages of a mid-drive motor is being able to manipulate the motor's power through the gear ratio you choose to ride in. That becomes a huge factor that comes into play on hills in particular. Riding up this hill, I did notice that I was lacking a shifter, that I wasn't able to kind of shift down, increase my cadence, and really take advantage of that grunty torque. The bike cleared the hill fine. I never once felt like the bike wasn't gonna clear the hill. It never struggled. The motor never made any sort of bad whining noises or any sort of rattles. And it didn't really ask that much of me. I was never out of breath. I was able to narrate the hill all the way to the top, but it wasn't that fast. I'm wondering if this bike had a manually shifting drivetrain, a more traditional drivetrain, if we would have seen a quicker time. I really don't think hill climb time is something someone who's going to be considering an automatic drivetrain is really going to be worried about. I think they're going to be more worried about whether the bike will make it up the hill, period, which this one will. So again, I may be diving too much into the weeds, but it is food for thought as more automatic shifting systems come into play in the future. So it was actually first introduced to the Ride Radiant Carbon at the Sea Otter Classic in Monterey, California, this year's Sea Otter Classic. And I actually got to do a full-blown interview with Tony Ellsworth about this bike, his vision for it, and what it was supposed to be. And in that interview, I kept referring to the Radiant Carbon as a beach cruiser. 
and I'm not sure you could blame me. It's got that kind of style. It's from Southern California. There's a lot about this bike that screams beach cruiser. But Ellsworth actually got a little peeved with me for continually calling it a beach cruiser, and he corrected me. It's not a beach cruiser, but it's not not a beach cruiser. It's a lot of different bikes kind of jammed into one. It's using the frame, carbon fiber frame material of a high performance e-bike. It's got the geometry of a comfort bike, the upright position of a beach cruiser, the high-end componentry of a very expensive commuter bike. It's really a little bit of everything. The Ride Radiant Carbon feels like a little bit of an enigma to me. It's the first bike I've ever reviewed of dozens and dozens that I haven't been able to neatly put into a category. And I have a feeling that's what Ellsworth was going for with this bike. I also have a feeling that just like so many other bikes we're seeing nowadays, this is the type of bicycle that never would have been designed had it not been for its motor and battery. And that's not because it doesn't pedal efficiently, efficiently or it's so heavy that it can't be ridden without assistance. It's because before motors and batteries, cycling was so siloed, you'd really never see a bike that was attempting to be a little bit of everything. You were either a mountain biker or a road biker, you were a commuter or you were a, a messenger style rider. You had to pick one. And what Ellsworth has done with, I guess, a little bit of a mad scientist brain here is he has taken a little bit of everything and put it into this bike. I've gotten to do very long rides on this bike. I've gotten to do short trips to the store. I've gotten to go on just cruises. I've done rides that even got my heart rate up and made my legs hurt. You can do really anything with this bike. And that's pretty phenomenal. He seems to have done it fairly well. So obviously the $5,000 price point of the Radiant Carbon can be a little bit prohibitive to some. That's a lot of money. And I honestly quite feel like this was built for a very small segment of the bicycling population. It's made for those people who are looking for something really premium, really rare, really, really unique. But there's also good news. This is the first bike that the ride has ever produced. And I know from speaking with Ellsworth that they are working on a much more affordable version of this bike. It's likely going to have an aluminum frame. It might have a more traditional drivetrain, but you're gonna be able to see this thing at a much more bite size price point. All in though, I have really, really enjoyed my time on the Radiant Carbon, actually quite a bit more than I expected to. You know, there are a lot of really cool ideas that come out of the bicycle industry, some that are fairly lofty and maybe a little too lofty. I looked at this bike and thought this may be one of those scenarios where you've got a bike designer just building whatever they want to. But after spending more than 100 miles on it, I'd, I would say it rides exactly how he says it would. I've been very impressed with it. I've really enjoyed it. And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel. And if you wanna know more about the Radiant Carbon, be sure to click the link in the description below this video for a little bit more in-depth review of the bike with all of the data that we've collected on it. For Electric Bike Report, I'm Sam Gross. Thank you so much for watching.